Hey guys, welcome to another A-Level Maths Revision video. Today we're taking a look at some more statistics. And we're going to take a look at chapter 2, which is looking at measures of location and spread. So this chapter looks at a few important kind of ideas, such as being able to find the mean and variance of a set of data, um, being able to find the medium uh, using interpolation, for example. And it also introduces this idea of coding. Okay, so we'll take a look at each of these. Um, so let's take a look at what we've got first. So the first question, a nice uh, introduction. Shouldn't be anything too tricky. Um, if you've done GCSE maths and you know you're absolutely fine with it, um, this should be a pretty similar question for you. So what have we got here? Well, we've got group data, um, and we wanted to find an estimate of the mean noise level. So remember, to find an estimate for the mean, we've grouped a frequency table like this. What we do is we find the midpoint of each corresponding basically element or set of data and then we times it by the corresponding frequency so what I mean by that for example for the first um, frequency here for the noise in decibels of 65 to 69 we take the midpoint so the midpoint would just be 65 plus 69 divided by 2 but you can see pretty easily that the midpoint is just 67 so what I'm going to get here for the mean so mean can be equal so it's going to be 67 and we times it by the corresponding frequency, so 6, 7 times 1, so that would just be 67. But what we'll do is we'll work out all the actual sums first, all the calculations, and then we'll just sum it up. Um, so the next midpoint, 70 out to 74, so that midpoint is 72. And again, times it by the corresponding frequency, so 72 times 4. And all we do is we keep going along until we've done each um, set, basically, so 77 times by 6. And just keep going here, it's pretty repetitive. Um, but, you know, as long as you can do it, no issues. 87 times 8. Um, plus 92 times 4. And then finally, plus 97 times 1. Okay. If you struggle to find the midpoint, like I said before, just add the two values, divide by 2. We're only taking just the average um, of that interval. And then we divide this, if you remember by the total frequency, okay? But we're told the actual total frequency is 30 locations, so we divide this by 30, okay? So if we work out the numerator, divide it by 30, we've got the mean here, okay? So do all the, the numerator on your calculator, okay? So the mean, so the numerator, that comes to 2,470. We divide that by 30. So what does that give us? That's approximately, oh, if you round it to a sensible, um, you know, accuracy, you get 82.3 there. And if we put this into context, what we're looking at, so we're looking at the um, basically the decibels and noise um, for some concert. So this is 82.3 decibels. Okay. So that's part A. And then for part B, it's just essentially one line. Um, so why is this an estimate? Well, consider the fact that this is grouped frequency. We don't know exactly where that value kind of lies. Um, so for that reason, we just take the midpoint because that's going to kind of give us the best, you know, uh, the best estimate essentially. So it's an estimate. So it's an estimate as we don't know the exact data values. As we don't know. exact data values okay so that's simply all you've got to say there one mark one line sufficient okay so a nice easy question to get us started the next question here essentially is just a usually formula book question um, there's nothing else really to it ideally for a question like this you have seen something similar but even if you haven't seen this before this shouldn't be too bad if you just use your formula book so question two um, from exercise 2e here, question two. So we've got 10 collie dogs that are weighed in kilograms. So we're given some summary data. So we, need, we know the sum of W is 241. We know the sum of W squared is 5,905. So all we want to do is find the standard deviation. And the formula for the standard deviation is given in your formula book. So like I said, just a formula book question. You don't have to memorize the formula. Just use the formula book. 
So the formula for the standard deviation has given us the square root of the sum. So in the formula book, it does it in terms of x. Obviously, in our case, sigma x squared will be sigma w squared. But don't worry about that too much. We divide that by n, and then we subtract the mean of x squared. Okay. Now, we've got sigma x squared. We have n. That's 10. The only thing we don't have just yet is sigma x bar. Uh, sorry, x bar here. Okay. Well, how do we get x bar? Remember, this is just the mean of the sample. And the mean of the sample here is just going to be the sum of w, 21.1, divided by n, where n is 10. Okay. So in this case, n bar, sorry, w bar, what am I doing? w bar will be 241 divided by 10. Okay. So all I'm going to do here is just plug all this in. So sigma x squared, um, in this case sigma w squared, so this is the square root of 5905 divided by 10 minus w bar here. So we just square this. So 241 over 10 squared. You can write that in its decimal equivalent if you prefer, but you don't have to worry about that too much. Okay, and then just put this into your calculator. And what you get here for the standard deviation is 3.11 kilograms there. Okay, so like you can see, pretty standard stuff. If the question asks for the variance, okay, if the question asks for the variance, now this isn't technically given. But remember, the variance is just the standard deviation squared. So in essence, it kind of is given. Um, so that would just be, you know, standard deviation squared. That would be 3.11 squared. If you had to work it out, that would be how you do it. Okay. The next question here now. Now we start taking a look at coding. So the coded mean price of televisions in a shop was worked out. So they're using this code in here. So y is equal to x minus 65 over 200. We're told the mean price was 1.5. So we want to find the true mean price of the televisions. So what we need to consider here is using this coded equation, we know the mean. So all we actually have to do is just solve for x. Okay, x gives us the true mean price. So x gives true mean price. Okay. So, let's have a go at doing this. So what we're saying here is y equals x minus 65 plus 100. So in other words, 1.5 is equal to x minus 65 over 200. So all we need to do now is solve for x here. Um, this shouldn't be too bad. Remember, we need to isolate x. So if I get rid of this denominator here first by times in both sides by 200, we get x minus 65. So the 200 will just cancel on this side. I'm going to write it here, and that's going to be equal to 1.5 times 200. Okay, 1.5 times 200 is 300, so x minus 65 is equal to 300. And then finally, add 65 to both sides to get x, so x is equal to 365. Okay, now obviously, use a bit of initiative here. If this answer came out as something silly, if it was negative, for example, doesn't make sense. You can't have a negative price for television. Um, that would actually mean they're giving you a television and paying you. So <laughs> no shop's going to do that. Um, and if it's a very, very small answer, like 1.5 here, um, for what we think is the true mean price, again, probably something wrong. You know, a TV is probably going to cost a few hundred quid. So gives you a bit of an idea there. Okay, so that's how we use... Um, coding to find the, the true mean price. Now let's have a look at an example where we want to estimate the standard deviation um, using coding as well. So this question in context is looking at the weekly income of 100 women. Uh, the data is coded using this equation. So y equals i minus 90 divided by 100. We're given a few following um, summations. So sigma y is equal to 131 sigma y squared is equal to 176.84 okay so we want to work out here now the standard deviation or we want to estimate the standard deviation 
So the first thing is we're going to need the formula for the standard deviation again. So remember, the standard deviation, just like we did with the first question, so that's going to be sigma y squared divided by m minus y bar squared. Okay. Remember for this question, m is given in the question 100 women, so n is 100. So here now, we can obtain a formula here for the coded standard deviation, and then we can use the equation to obtain um, the estimated uh, standard deviation. So plugging in the information we've got, so this is the square root, 176.84 divided by 100 minus, so y bar is the sum of y, 131 divided by n, 100, and then square it. So this is 131 over 100 squared. Okay. So this is the coded standard deviation. Working this out here, just plug this into your calculator. And what you get here is 0 0.229. Okay. But remember, this is the coded standard deviation. We want to estimate the, you know, the actual standard deviation. So how do we do that? Now we take the equation we've got for the coding okay and what we do here is we use this equation and solve it in terms of essentially my standard deviation here so what I do is I put the standard deviation equal to this and then we solve for i okay so make this the standard deviation equal to i minus 90 okay so I should say coded standard deviation um, so we're putting 0.229 equal to this equation and then solving for i and solve for i. Okay, so if we do it up here, that's 0.229 um, is equal to i minus 90 over 100. So all I need to do now, again, solve for i here, we times through by the 100, so that gives me 22.9. So 100 times 0.229 is equal to 22.9. But the question finishes here. So I said we rearrange and just solve for i here. But the, the thing is, with a standard deviation, it doesn't matter what you add as a constant to the standard deviation. It will have no effect on the standard deviation. So it doesn't matter if this was minus 90, it doesn't matter if it's plus 10, plus a million, the standard deviation will always remain what it is here okay so the actual standard deviation on the estimate so estimate so estimate for our standard deviation is 22.9 okay so you don't add basically 90 to either side or subtract 90 because it will have no effect on the con on the actual standard deviation okay so constants um, plus or minus constants no effect on the standard deviation okay so we've gone through two examples of one finding the mean one finding the standard deviation the standard deviation is a little bit more work to it um, but it shouldn't be anything too tricky you've got the formula in your formula book so that's this here uh, remember you've got that so you don't have to worry too much and then finally this last question here is taking a look at interpolation now this can be quite a tricky topic um, and I think I'm going to do a separate video for it, um, just to give it enough kind of detail. Um, just a couple more examples. So in this question here, we've got a, you know a table of data, um, group data again. And what we want to do is estimate the interquartile range using interpolation. So why is it an estimate again? Because we don't know the exact kind of values, uh, because it's anywhere between 20 and 29, for example, 30 and 39, 40 and 49. So Interpolation is one of our best ways of getting um, the, you know, the Q1, the median, and the Q3, for example. You can also work out percentiles with it as well. Um, so, for example, if we want to work out the interquartile range, so the IQR, remember, that's Q3 minus Q1. Okay. Well, how do I work out Q3 in this case, and how do I work out Q1? Well, we use interpolation. And for interpolation, I would always draw a little sketch. 
Um, so first, let's just identify which value gives us Q1. So we've got 80 values here. If you add up the frequencies, so 5 plus 10 and plus 36 plus 20 plus 9, that'll give you 80. Okay, so we've got 80 values here for the frequency. So Q1, that's going to be 80 divided by 4. Okay, Q1 is divided by 4. So 8 divided by 4, so that means um, Q1 is the 20th value. Okay. So where does the 20th value lie? Well, what you need to do now is go through the frequencies and check where the 20th value occurs. So it doesn't occur between 20 and 29 because that's only 5. It doesn't occur between 30 and 39 because that would be the, you know, um, the cumulative the cumulative sum here, so 5 plus 10, so that would be 15, but it occurs between 40 and 49, okay, it has to occur somewhere between there, okay, so it lies in, so it lies between 40 to 49. So, what we do here now is just basically sketch um, a little line to identify this. So, if it's between 40 to 49, just compare the table from one, 30 to 39, and then 40 to 49. So we're missing kind of between 39 to 40. So what we do here is we say that's 39.5, and then the upper bound here would be 49.5, okay? And what we've got to do is consider the values before 39.5, for example, and then at 49.5. So for example, before we get to the 39.5, so the third um, set here, so let me just show my pen colour, it's a bit easier to see. So before we get to this column here, how many, what's our frequency essentially? So it's just 5 plus 10. So this is 15. And then once we've got to 49.5, what's our frequency? So that'll just be, once we're at the end here, so we need to include this frequency. So it's 5 plus 10, 15, plus 36. So that's 51, okay? So what we need to do now is work out the 20th value, which if you look kind of at your actual line here, it doesn't essentially matter where you put it, but it would be somewhere down here, okay? Let's just say it's there. So what I need to do now is consider the distance from 15 to 20 and then 15 to 51. And we consider that in terms of the distance from here. So from 39.5 to 49.5. So from 15 to 20, that's 5. From 15 to 51, what would that be? That would be 36. So what we do is we set this up as a ratio. This would be 5 over 36. So 5 over 36. And then we times it by this total length here. So from 39 Point five to forty nine point five. That's ten. So we times it by ten. Okay. And what we're actually saying here is that this is equal to x. Okay. So x is equal to five over thirty six times ten. So how do we actually get Q one then using this? Well, Q one is simply going to be um, our starting point thirty nine point five plus x. So this is x here what we've worked out so that's x so x is equal to this all you need to do is 39.5 plus x so if you work that in your calculator um, what you will find is that this is roughly 1.39 so this is 39.5 plus 1.39 and we get 40.9 here okay just with rounding so q1 is 40.9 so that's our Q1. So we need to repeat this now with Q3. So like you see, these can be you know a bit long. Um, so we'll clear it all and have another go. So if you haven't already, pause the video, have a go yourself now, see if you can work out Q3 using interpolation. So working out Q3. Repeat the, the same process. Again, draw another line. So where does Q3 fall? So Q3 is essentially Q1 times 3, right? So that was 20 times by 3, so it's a 60th value. So 
so 60th value. So where does the 60th value occur? So 5, 10, 15, 51, so it's got to occur between 50 and 59. So it lies between So it lies between 50 to 59. But remember, we, we take and add um, to each boundary here. So it's not 50, it's 49.5. And it's not 59, it's 59.5. Okay. And then again, consider before you get to 50 to 59, what's the sum here? So that would just be the upper bound of the last one. So that's 51. And then once you've added on that, that essentially that next set of data here, the 20, what's our new total? That's 71. Now we want the 60th value, so that's going to occur pretty much slap bang in the middle here. Okay, that would be our 60th value. So all we need to do now is work out the distance from 51 to 60, 51 to 71, and then 49.5 to 59.5. So that is 9. So from 51 to 71, that's just 20. And then from 49.5 to 59.5, that's 10. So all I do now is set up my ratio, um, oh sorry, I set up my quotient here, so 51, uh, from seven, blah, blah, blah. 51 to 60 is 9, so what we get here is 9 over 20, we times it by this, which is 10, so this is x, so x is equal to this, and remember x represents this range here, okay, so this is x. So all I do is I take 49.5. And we add on x, where in this case x works out to be 4.5. So this is 49.5 plus 4.5 to give us 54q3. Okay, so q3 is 54, q1 is 40.9, so the interquartile range, okay, well that's just going to be q3, 54 minus q1, which is 40.9 to give us. 13.1 there. Okay, so like you can see, it's quite methodical. Don't try and memorize any formulas or anything like that. Um, I think as long as you can understand the concept, this isn't too bad. Notoriously, though, it does cause a lot of issues. So if you're struggling, have a look at a few more questions, um, see if you can get better with it. And then for part B here, um, just throughout this video, up, we want to see if we can estimate the variance and standard deviation for this data. So we've been given um, a bit of information. We know the sum of fx. So we're going to put it on sum of fx. 3740. We know sum of fx squared is 183,040. So what we want to try and do now is work out the variance and standard deviation. So again, nothing that you haven't seen here in the, in the video so far. Um, so, for example, a standard deviation, so that's going to be the square root here of, so it's the sum of fx squared, so 183,040, divided by n, where n is 80, remember. Okay, we have 80 values in total, so we divide it by 80. And then what we do is we subtract the sum of fx, so 3,740, divided by 80 squared. So remember, we divide it by n again, 80, and we square it. So if you work this out in your calculator, what you should get here uh, is 10.1, um, just rounding that sensibly. So 10.1, so that's the standard deviation. So remember, if you want the variance, all you do is you square the standard deviation. So the variance, so that's equal to sigma squared, so that's going to be 10.1 squared, which is going to give us uh, approximately, we get 102. Okay, depending on how you round it. And there we have it. So like you can see, this formula here, very, very important. Um, it's given in the formula below, so you don't have to worry about memorizing it. Um, but yeah, so that brings us to the end of this video. I hope it's helped. Um, if you do notice any errors, um, please just leave me a comment down below. If there's anything you'd like me to cover again, just leave it down below.